Hi everyone and welcome to this mini-series on FastLED. Uh, over the next few videos my aim is to introduce programming uh, addressable LEDs using the FastLED library from lighting your first pixel to the more complex palette uh, wave and noise functions. After that it's up to you guys. If there's an explanation of something that you'd like to see uh, please leave it in the comments below and I might add that to the list. I'll aim to get these videos out on a regular basis uh, but real life unfortunately often gets in the way uh, so I'll see what I can do. Today we're going to cover a number of introductory topics. Uh, they are what FastLED is for and why you might want to use it, um, the hardware you need, how to connect it up, uh, and a few notes on power delivery, um, how to start your code, the setup function, and the FastLED loop, and finally uh, just writing your first simple pattern. Straight from uh, FastLED.io, which is the, the website of FastLED, uh, FastLED is a fast, efficient, easy to use Arduino library for programming addressable LED strips and pixels such as the WS series, uh, NeoPixel, and more. But to start with, uh, what actually is uh, an addressable LED? Traditional LEDs are usually a single color and what you might call dumb. Uh, if you wanted to control more than a few of them, you'd very quickly run out of output pins on your uh, microcontroller. This is where addressable LEDs such as the WS2812B come in. These LEDs are usually RGB, which means that each pixel contains red, green, and blue LEDs, each of which can be controlled separately. Combining together various amounts of red, green, and blue means the LED can show any color you like. As great as this is, the real magic comes when you want to control a whole bunch of these LEDs. Instead of having a separate wire going to each LED, we can communicate with hundreds of LEDs at once from a single pin on the microcontroller. The exact way data is transmitted uh, is a bit beyond the scope of this introductory video, and it's really not something you need to care about, uh, as the FastLED library handles all this complicated stuff for you. Once you understand FastLED, you can start creating your own patterns, or even progress to making a, a matrix or a slightly terrifying mask. To get started with FastLED, uh, there are two main things we need. Uh, a microcontroller, um, such as an Arduino, and an addressable LED strip. If we want to run more than a few LEDs, you'll also need a, a power supply, uh, but we won't be using one for the moment. FastLED supports a bunch of different microcontrollers, uh, including pretty much every Arduino board. I've got an Uno here, um, a Nano. Um, it also supports the AT Tiny, the little AT Tiny 85 just there, uh, and the Teensy, which I don't have. It supports the ESP8266 uh, if you need Wi-Fi. Uh, it doesn't officially port, uh, support the ESP32. Uh, I've got one of those there, but um, I've used these a lot for, for projects where you need a little bit more grunt, and I haven't had any problems. However, other people have found issues with uh, flickering with this board, with uh, lights. Um, there is, I believe, a GitHub fork of FastLED with a little bit more support for ESP32 and if I can find that I will link it in the description below. Choosing which LED strips to use uh, can seem pretty daunting. There are many different types available at greatly varying price points. Um, here are some things to consider when buying an LED strip. First, of course, make sure that the LED chipset is actually supported by FastLED. Uh, there is a list of supported chipsets on the FastLED GitHub page. Uh, the most common ones currently are the three-wire uh, WS2812B, WS2815 and WS2811, and the four-wire APA102, amongst many, many others. Make sure that you get an RGB strip, like the LED shown on the left, rather than the RGBW uh, shown on the right. So RGBW strips have red, green, and blue LEDs, and an additional white LED in each pixel. These strips give out a much nicer white light than just um, RGB by itself, but unfortunately this time FastLED doesn't support these strips. Uh, here's to hoping that support comes along for those eventually. For the easiest start, go for a 5 volt powered strip. Uh, 12 volt uh, strips are available, but this complicates the power requirements. Uh, you need to move to these eventually, maybe, uh, if you need long LED runs, because you get less voltage drop uh, across the 12 volt strips. The strips also come in different densities, that is, uh, the number of LEDs per meter. The most common densities seem to be 30, 60, and 144 LEDs per meter. I tend to go with 60 LEDs per meter uh, for general use. Uh, remember, though, the more pixels you have, the higher your power requirements are, are going to be, and that is something we need to think about. Finally, uh, do you need waterproofing or not? Um, if you're not going to need it, don't go for it. Uh, I've got two different strips here. This one is uh, not waterproofed, and you can see the, the copper contacts there. Very easy to solder to on the top. Um, this is a waterproof strip. It's covered in a sort of silicone uh, rubber coating. And the problem with this is um, you need to remove the coating if you need to solder to these contacts. And um, you can solder to contacts on the back here. If I peel back some of the adhesive here, you'll be able to see that there are some of the contacts. But these are covered by this strip of uh, adhesive here. So you have to remove the adhesive as well, like so, uh, in order to actually get to these contacts. So for make everything nice and simple, um, I recommend if you don't need waterproofing, just go for one of the non-waterproof strips, uh, much easier to deal with. 
My recommendation for a basic strip to start with uh, would be a non-waterproof 5 volt strip uh, with something like a WS2812B chipset and about 60 LEDs per meter, so medium density. Uh, I'll put a link to, to one of these in the description below. Of course, you're allowed to use whatever you like. I just find this uh, one of the easiest ones to use. Uh, the YouTube channel The Hookup tested some of the most common strips uh, about a year ago uh, and made a really good video about it. And I've also linked that down in the description in case you want to take a look at that. The final thing to think about here is how you're going to power your LED strip. If you only have a few LEDs, you can just use the 5 volt pin on your microcontroller, uh, which is what I'll be doing in the, the examples in this series, because I'll only be using a few LEDs. And you can hook this up uh, as seen on this diagram. For anything more than a few LEDs, however, you will need a proper power supply. Often you also want the USB hooked up as well um, as you write your programs. This is completely fine as long as you follow the diagram shown here. It's really important that you connect the ground of the power supply to both the microcontroller and the LED strip. If you're done using the USB, uh, it's also fine to power the microcontroller and the strip from the same 5 volt power supply, uh, and this should be hooked up as shown. Long strips can demand large amounts of current, and it's important to know what you're doing here. The maximum current draw for a WS2812B LED is 20 milliamps per color per LED. Each LED has three colors uh, for 60 milliamps per LED total. So say we have 60 LEDs per meter, we have a five meter strip. In theory, this could draw up to 18 amps. However, this is only the case if we have every LED set to white at full brightness, which almost never happens in reality. For long strips like this, which draw high current, there's a considerable voltage drop along the strip, and this can cause the LEDs at the far end uh, to become much redder, uh, as there's not enough voltage to light the blue part of the LED. Here I have a strip that's particularly bad for voltage drop, uh, and I'm only powering it from one end. But every colour here is set to white, uh, but due to the voltage drop, the colour gets more and more red um, as we spiral into the middle, uh, and the voltage decreases. We can solve this problem using something called power injection, uh, and this is where we connect the power supply to the strip every one meter or so, um, as shown in the diagram. Finally, if you're using a four-wire chipset like the APA102, the same wiring diagrams apply, but you'll need to connect one more wire uh, from the clock pad on the strip uh, to any digital input on the microcontroller, uh, as you can see in the diagram here. Don't panic about all this though, and for our purposes, the power consumption will be low. So let's hook up some hardware and uh, make some pretty lights. We're going to start off simple here, so I'm going to connect my parts together on this breadboard. I'm going to use an Arduino Nano uh, as the microcontroller, uh, because they're cheap and, and easy to get hold of. And I'm also going to use this uh, LED strip, we've got 18 pixels here, uh, 18 LEDs, and these are WS2812B um, LEDs, and they have a separation of well, 60 LEDs per meter, so it's sort of medium density. Now I'm going to connect the data pin here to pin D2, and the data pin should be connected through a resistor. Um, I usually use a 330 ohm resistor, but some around 500 ohms, something along those lines is completely fine. So let's put that in. Now, when you're connecting up your LED strip, you want to look carefully and make sure that the data is flowing the correct way. So if you look at the green line here, this is the data input, and uh, you can see the arrows are pointing along the strip this way. So that means the data needs to flow that way. If you try and put data in from this end, uh, going against these little tiny arrows, um, it's not going to work. So make sure the arrow is going the right way. Uh, I'm going to run this uh, power-wise actually just from the 5 volt pin of the, um, the Nano itself. So let me just put some jumpers in here for a moment. Now I don't necessarily recommend uh, running any strips longer than a few LEDs from the actual power pin of the Nano itself. You need an external power supply for that. But for simplicity, for now, this is what we're going to do. Now it's a good idea to put a capacitor across the, the 5 volt and ground connections just here. So I've got a 1000 microfarad um, electrolytic cap. Size doesn't really matter that much, um, but you know, 1000 or so microfarads is completely fine. Uh, make sure you get the polarity correct. So there's usually a stripe down the negative side of the capacitor. So make sure that faces towards ground. So I'm gonna put it between five volts and ground like that. Uh, and then let's hook up the strip here. So usually these come with wires uh, pre-soldered to the end of them. Uh, the white one here is gonna to go to ground, which is this one just here. Uh, the red strip is five volts. And that's gonna to go to this connection just here. And we have the green wire, which is our signal wire, and that's going to connect to the end of this uh, this resistor just here. Okay, so we've got our hardware all set up and connected. Um, let's head over to the Arduino IDE and uh, dive in and let's get coding. So I've plugged the Nano in via USB. Uh, make sure if you go to the tools menu here, make sure your correct board is selected and the correct COM port is selected. Uh, if you haven't all, uh, done so already, you'll need to install the FastLED library. So go to tools, uh, manage libraries, Give that a second to pop up. And then you need to search up here for fast lead. Now I've already got this installed. 
uh, you can see here at the top, I've got version 3.3.3, which is the most current version uh, at the time of uh, videoing this. So the very first line here is uh, hash include fastled.h. That means we're going to be using the, the fastled library. Uh, we need to make sure we use that every time we do anything with, uh, with fastled, of course. And then we have a couple of defines. So the first thing down here is the number of LEDs. Now we've got uh, 18 LEDs in our strip, so we've defined num LEDs being 18. I've then also done another define for the LED pin. So this is the pin that uh, connects via the resistor to the data pin on the, uh, the LED strip. And then we need to set up our LED array. So this is called CRGB uh, LEDs num LEDs. So our array of LEDs is going to be called LEDs, and the size of it is going to be the number of LEDs that we have, which is, of course, um, 18 in this case. So what this array does, this stores basically the color data uh, for each one of the LEDs. So if you refer to LEDs 0, that will be the first LED in your strip. LEDs 1 will be the second LED, etc., etc. Then we get to our setup function. Now, the first thing we need to do is to tell uh, FastLED where our LED array actually is. So we're going to use FastLED.addLEDs. And then here um, is the type of LED that you're using. Now, I'll put a list up here of the various types that uh, FastLED uh, accepts. Um, I'm using WS2812B type, so I put that in there. The next parameter here is the LED pin, which we've defined to be two. So that's the, the data pin for your LEDs. And then the final parameter here is the color order. Now I found when using lots of these LED strips that GRB seems to be a, a pretty common color order, but it could be GRB, RGB, BGR, whatever. And it's a, big, a matter of messing about with this basically to find out which order that should be in. And in fact, that's what we're gonna do uh, in a few minutes time. Then we need to set the brightness. Uh, we don't have to do this, but it's, it's good practice. Um, I've set the brightness here to be 50. Like most numbers in FastLED, this number here is uh, what's called a uint8 underscore t. That's an unsigned 8-bit integer. Uh, in English, that basically means a number between 0 and 255. Lots and lots of numbers in FastLED are these, these types of numbers between 0 and 255. It's actually incredibly helpful. Uh, it means FastLED can do maths on them much more quickly uh, than it could if they were a floating point, for example. So a brightness of 50 will be plenty bright enough. We don't want to set this too high because remember, we are running this off the, uh, the USB port, so we don't want to pull too much current through our USB port on the PC here. So that's our setup function, the very basic setup function uh, done. And then let's go on to our loop. So the way the FastLED works is that you set up um, the colors, basically, of the LED in your LEDs array. Uh, and then at the end of it, you write FastLED.show, and that writes out that array to the LEDs. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting LED0 to be red, LED1 to be green, and LED2 to be blue. So um, And then we're setting that in the array, and then we're showing it, we're sending all that data out to the strip. Now, the reason why I'm doing this uh, is because I want to check that for this strip here, this is the correct color order. So if we do that now, so if we um, upload that, and if we have a look at our strip here, we can see that we do have the first LED is red, the second LED is green, and the third LED is blue. So that means that GRB was the right color order for this. So now we know that our color order is correct for our strip. Uh, I've changed the loop function here to make it something a little bit different. So first of all, uh, this line here is telling the first LED in our array, so that's LED zero, uh, to be red. And then we call fastled.show to kind of write that out to the strip. And then we delay for 200 milliseconds. After 200 milliseconds, we then turn our first LED in the strip uh, black, so turn it off basically. And then we write that information out to the strip with fastled.show. And then we delay for another 200 milliseconds. And what we're basically doing here is we're blinking our LED on and off. Not particularly exciting, but hopefully you can see how this works. Now, one little comment here is that using delay in fast lead patterns is very much frowned upon. Um, and in fact, in Arduino programming in general, it's not normally a very good idea. Uh, and that's because during delay, your Arduino can't do anything else. Uh, over the next couple of uh, videos, I'll show you a much better way of doing this. But hopefully this is understandable for the moment. Now let's make the LED look as though it's moving back and forth um, along the strip. So I've changed the loop function here again. Uh, it looks a little bit more complicated, but it's not that bad. If you understand um, Arduino programming, it shouldn't be too tricky. So we've got a for loop set up. Um, and basically, it's going to start off with I being zero. So that's going to start off with the first LED in the strip. And we're going to set that uh, to be red. Then we're going to show it. So we're going to write that data out to the strip. And we're going to wait uh, for 100 milliseconds or a tenth of a second. After a tenth of a second, we're going to turn that LED off. We're going to switch it to black. Uh, and then we're going to repeat the loop, but for the next LED in the strip. So at this point, I will be one. 
So the, that'll be the second LED, confusingly, uh, in the strip. We're going to make that red. We're going to show it. Then we're going to turn it off. And then we're going to make the third LED uh, red, etc., etc. And that's going to make it look uh, as if the LED is moving along the strip. When it gets to the other end, we're basically going to do the opposite. We're going to move it back. So we start off uh, at the maximum number of LEDs, or sorry, 17, 18 minus 1. And we're going to step back, I minus minus. We're going to subtract 1 from that each time. So we start off on LED 17 being red, and then it'll be 16, 15, 14, 13, etc., uh, until we get back to the other end again. I now want to have a look at some of the fill functions. And the first one I want to look at here is fill solid. And what this does is it will fill a certain number of LEDs with a solid block of colour. So the first parameter in here is just the LED array, which is LEDs or LEDs. We defined that earlier on up here. The second parameter is how many of those LEDs from zero do we want to fill up? I've put num LEDs so we can fill all of the LEDs in our strip. And then the final parameter here is what colour do we want to fill that with? And I put red in this case. Uh, I then told it to write that data out um, to the LED strip and then wait for half a second and then do the same thing for green and the same thing for blue. So let's upload that and you can see that our strip is behaving itself. It's flashing red, green and blue uh, at half second intervals. Let's now have a look at the fill gradient function. So this is fill gradient RGB because we're using RGB colors uh, in here. We'll talk more about colors during the next uh, video because it's a really important thing uh, to understand on FastLED. If you understand how colors work, uh, it makes things a lot, lot easier. Uh, there's a few different parameters here for this. Uh, LEDs, again, like earlier, this is our array that contains the information about our LEDs. Then we have the num LEDs. So how many LEDs do we want to fill? Uh, and then I put two different colors here, magenta and yellow. And so what that will do is it will start at magenta at one end of the strip and at yellow at the other end of the strip uh, with a nice gradient in between those two. You can actually have up to four colors uh, in one of these gradient fills. So here I've got red, yellow, green and blue, and that gives a nice little uh, sort of rainbow effect. So let's uh, upload that and see what that looks like. Finally, then one last function to have a look at, and that's fill rainbow, just because it makes a really pretty pattern. Uh, it starts off very similar to fill solid and fill gradient. We've got LEDs, that's just a reference to our LED array. Number of the LEDs that we want to fill up. So I've just put num LEDs, so we fill up all of them. Uh, this next parameter here, zero, this tells you what value of hue to start on. Uh, in fast LED, hue is another name for, for color. And um, hue runs from zero to 255. Well, again, we'll talk about this in more detail than on the next video. And then the final parameter here is the delta hue. So how much do we change the hue by? as we go from one LED to the next. So if I want to go all the way through the rainbow uh, from one side to the other, I want to do 255, that's the whole hue from one end to the other, uh, divided by the number of LEDs we've got. And that should give us uh, a lovely rainbow effect. So let's have a little look at that. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you found this useful uh, as you start on your FastLED journey. Uh, next time, we'll be looking at how FastLED handles colour, a pretty important topic. So if you want to know about this uh, as soon as the next video comes out, please do consider subscribing and helping me out. All right, hope to see you then. Bye-bye for now.